Last year, UN expert Tendaji Achiyume visited the Netherlands and concluded that it is a very bad place with a lot of racism, discrimination and xenophobia. This video will explain the United Nations Human Rights Council and the current reality regarding these so-called mandate holders who are becoming more and more dangerous for the peoples of Europe. When the Americans joined the Second World War, they emphasized together with the Brits in their transatlantic charter that the West should remain a collection of free and independent nations. Sound bites from that time period and after, such as the free West or the free world, were meant to emphasize that the Western world, contrary to the Soviet Union, consists of a collection of free and independent nations who govern themselves in their own national states. Within these national states, people enjoy greater degrees of personal freedom, which is made possible thanks to the commonality of values and the social cohesion and social trust that exists within the boundaries of these states. However, this perspective on the West as a collection of free nations gradually changed as a result of the seeds that were planted in the educational institutions from the year 1968 onwards. Like many of the words, many of the symbols of past revolutions appear. The red flag of socialism, the black flag of anarchism, the clenched fist raised high, the hymn of the proletariat, the international. Radical leftists gradually took over the institutions, often by using intimidation tactics and violence. They infiltrated the academic world, the education system, the media and many other domains of western societies. An organization like the United Nations and the direction in which it evolved is the result of the zeitgeist that gradually emerged as a result of the these infiltrators having taken control of the education system and as a result the minds of the peoples of the West. After the year 1991 it became even worse because when the Soviet Union fell the peoples of Western Europe assumed that history was finally over and that all of humanity could finally come together in harmony just like in the famous song by John Lennon. They also assumed that the peoples of Europe are intrinsically bad and that therefore their ancestral land is something that should belong to the entire world instead. The world is everyone's, they believe. Everybody is a world citizen, so Europe belongs to the entire world. In 2006, 17 years after the fall of the Iron Curtain, the United Nations Human Rights Council, UNHRC, was created. Now promoting human rights around the world does not sound bad, because there are many places in the world where people are mistreated and murdered for having the wrong opinion, for example. In many places in Africa, and the Muslim world, things like mob justice and lynchings are very normal. However, what the people of the UNHRC quickly discovered was that countries where human rights are truly being violated do not care at all about the recommendations from the UNHRC. They also found out that the countries where human rights are not violated as much at all, such as the UK and the Netherlands, do care a lot about the recommendations from the UNHRC. In the UK and the Netherlands, the people already know that humiliating human beings because of their ethnic group turning them into slaves is something terrible. There is no Brit or Dutch man alive right now who views these things as something positive. In addition there is no person alive right now who has ever been enslaved by a Brit or by a Dutch man or who knows anybody who has ever been enslaved by a Brit or a Dutch man. The United Kingdom and the Netherlands are among the least racist societies on the entire planet. A problem that does exist in the United Kingdom and the Netherlands however is that we underestimate the degree to which people from outside of the West can hate us. So when a person like Mehdi Hassan joins the societal discussion in the United Kingdom, the British people assume that just because he is well groomed and speaks with a nice British accent, that his intentions are basically good and that his words can be taken at face value. When they then find out that the man in question says very different things in private than he says publicly, they are flabbergasted. That is what it fundamentally comes down to. It is to remain ignorant to cover up knowledge. After all, what is scarta? Scarta comes from the root word, which means to cover up, to conceal. The scarta is the one who covers up that knowledge which is clear. The French Orientalist scholar Lamens, he once wrote that the Quran is not far from considering unbelief, disbelief as an infirmity, as an illness, as a disease of the human mind. SubhanAllah. Non-Muslims point this out to us. 
The peoples of Western Europe have a hard time believing that there are people in this world who hate us and who are actually spending time every day working to destroy us. And by the way, the current Minister of Justice of Scotland badly needs some scrutinization as well. The UNHRC built on the utopic vision of the leftists from Western Europe gradually transformed into a platform that could be used by people from all over the world who hate the peoples of Europe to engage in ideological warfare against the peoples of Europe. This warfare basically happens under the umbrella of terms like human rights, social justice, international law and lately even sustainability. On the 8th of October 2019 a lady named Clarice Cargar who somehow managed to represent the Netherlands spoke at the UN in New York and called for the end of capitalism. While hardly anybody in the Netherlands either knows who she is, has ever been able to vote for her during an election or has has ever even heard about the type of nonsense that came out of her mouth. Those who suffer the most under poverty, capitalism, climate crisis and inequality are women and the most marginalized amongst us. The time has come to change the system to work for all of us or none at all. According to this lady, capitalism, the model that has enabled women to work, to make careers and to become independent economic actors in this world, is somehow oppressive for women. Another activist who has used the United Nations for her anti-European agenda is Vereen Shepherd. She was a member of all kinds of racial activist groups and she is known for coming to the Netherlands without any knowledge of native European traditions, but then targeting the Dutch tradition Sinterklaas and Black. Black Beat. I've made several videos about this topic. A quick summary, Black Beat is the Dutch version of the pagan European devil slash wild hunt figure. Everything he does is more or less the same as the version of this tradition in other parts of Europe. The black paint was believed to bring good luck, fertility and so on, but is also a reference towards the Moors. He kidnaps children back to Spain, which is both a reference to the Moorish slave trade of European children and to Al Andalus and to the Spanish Empire, which used to rule over the Netherlands. Therefore the clothing that he is wearing is not slave clothing, no, this is Spanish nobleman clothing. This is the clothing of Spanish imperialists. No, the tradition has nothing to do with colonialism, nor with the transatlantic slave trade. Anyone who claims this simply doesn't know what he or she is talking about. The documentary Pagan Europe, My Encounters with the Devil, created by a Dutch investigative journalist who has been studying all of this for more than 30 years perfectly explains everything. Anyway, a similar tradition can even be found in the Arab world, where it is called Haji Firuas, and here this tradition is officially protected by the United Nations, even though the Arab slave trade of black people started long before the European one and has actually never been ended. Let's move on to Tendaji Achiyume, who is the successor of Vereen Shepherd. About a decade ago, Zimbabwean President Mugabe implemented implemented a policy to disown land from white farmers as a restoration for colonialism. Around 4,000 white farmers got their land taken away from them by Mugabe's violent henchmen, who were granted the legal right to do this. One of these farmers, 73-year-old Mike Campbell, filed a complaint about all of this at a tribunal of the South African Development Community, a 14-nation organization aimed towards the protection of human rights in the region. The tribunal the tribunal analyzed the case and came to the conclusion that the Zimbabwean government's policy was indeed against their definition of human rights. As a result, Campbell ended up being beaten up in his own farmland and the place got burned down. Then Zambian-born Tendaji Achiyume wrote a research paper at the University of California called Socio-Political Dissonance and the Authority of International Courts. In this paper she argued that the tribunal which ruled in Campbell's favor was actually mistaken. The tribunal's decision, she claimed, was quote, socio-politically dissonant because it had failed to take into consideration the feelings of local people. So violent state-sponsored racism is legally acceptable if the victims are white and of European descent. This is what it basically comes down to. So this is Tendaji Achiyume. Today, she is traveling the world as a special rapporteur on contemporary forms of racism, racial discrimination, 
discrimination, xenophobia and related intolerance in order to quote, examine, monitor, advise and publicly report any xenophobia and discrimination that she sees. Now in order to identify all of this xenophobia and related intolerance, she does not go to South Africa where the most unimaginable things are being done to the white farmers. No, she comes to the United Kingdom and to the Netherlands. In May of 2018, Achiyume visited the UK in order to look for quote structural forms of discrimination and exclusion that may have been exacerbated by Brexit. And within a short period of only two weeks, she already concluded that yes, the UK is indeed very, very racist. In her so-called end of mission statement, she declared that the UK is a hotbed of state-sponsored xenophobia, where the state implements instruments of racial subordination, subordination people. So apparently the country where the native population are being arrested by the police for things they put on Twitter, because the Muslim mayor of their capital wants to combat intolerance and where 19,000 young British girls have been structurally sexually abused by Muslims throughout the period of only two years, is apparently even worse than that for people of color. She also claimed that the 2016 vote to leave the EU had made these quote minorities more vulnerable to racial discrimination and intolerance. In October of 2019, Tendaja Giume visited the Netherlands. She came to this country not to talk about the Dutch descended farmers who are getting slaughtered in South Africa as we speak, but instead to tell us that we are very racist and xenophobic. Our recently implemented Burka ban is a form of discrimination, even though I think it's not even being upheld by the police, and our government needs to do more to completely get rid of Black Pete. The journalists of our biased tax-funded state media outlet loved it and none of them even asked her one single critical question. Thank you very much all of you for coming and I really appreciate your engagement and attention and I hope that you will uh, cover the substantive issues in your in your reporting as well. Thank you. Thank you. A few months later, Achiuma published her so-called report, in which she claimed that Dutch children should learn in school that white Dutch people profited from exploitation of other peoples. I mean, the education system already is a complete disaster, so why not make it worse? So what do we make of all of this? All of this doesn't make much sense at all. Racism is already against the law in both the Netherlands and the United Kingdom, and anybody who is a victim of racial discrimination can just go to the police. The idea of having some international quasi-governing entity that is unelected and unaccountable to the peoples of Europe, but which then sends these nutcases to our countries to see how we are behaving, is something that would be quite comical if it weren't so dangerous. Because it is dangerous for the following reason. Countries like the United Kingdom and the Netherlands have signed several international treaties that attempt to move into the direction of social justice and equality between all groups. Even though these concepts are not really made that specific in these treaties, these documents can be interpreted by activists in any way they like and then can be weaponized against the peoples of Europe. And this is basically what's happening. A decade ago, these so-called experts like Farine Shepard and Tendaji Achiume came to our countries to tell us that we are racist and we thought that it was funny. Today, they come to our countries to tell us that we are racist and that we are not living up to the international treaties that were signed behind our backs by our government, which is already a bit more serious. It might be that one decade from now, they come to our countries fully backed by the European courts and fully equipped with legislative powers. And then they tell us that we are racist, not living up to the international law, and that further action will be taken to punish us for our sin of merely existing. And then we are no longer laughing. Therefore, I would like to urge the peoples of Europe and of the West in general to start taking this threat more seriously. The idea of an international moral minimum is nice, but the UNHRC is an organization that very sadly has become a home for anti-European activists who do not truly care about genuine human rights, but who are just using the legitimacy of the organization to engage in ethnic conflict against the peoples of Europe. Because let's be honest, this is what this is. This is African 
ethnic conflict directed against the peoples of Europe and it must stop. Thanks for watching this video, if you like this type of content please subscribe to my channel, share my video and feel free to check out my book about Islam and political correctness. I wish you a nice day.